Verskye organisaties beuiver hulle vir die belange van informele herwinners, dier as tussenganger op te tree tussen die overhede, die inwoners van die onderskye woonbeerte en hierdie groep mense. Een so weldoener is Stefan van de Westhuizen van Centurion. As mense sê, jy weet, jy moet na jou naaste kyk en dit, wat uit na die bybel uitkom en dit, en ek nie raar af baie familie en vriende nie, en vir my is my naaste maar die bagerezie. Ek voel ek het baie meer in gemeen met hulle as wat ek met die average ou op die straat het. Stephen is playing a very good role here. Since I've known him, I find him working with these people. Through him, we've been able to realize who we were. Before, most of us didn't even understand. It was a matter of just pulling a trolley, go sell, pull a trolley, go. There was no future perceptions to say, this is what we see in the future. Vertel vir my van die friksie tussen die stadsraad en die bakkerezie en waar het nou trek. Die stadsraad sien die bakkerezie as een probleem, want die ouwens breek baailoos en sikke goed is. Die stad gebruik juist die baailoos om die bakkerezie uit te sit van plekke waar hulle blijf. Omdat hulle baailoos breek dier die werk wat hulle doen, is het nou makkelijk vir die stad. Dit is soos een slaanstok wat die stad gebruik om dan van hierdie ouwens ontslaan te raak. Esh, die heb compleet nie. When they chase us, they, they, they can take our stuff if we, if we don't listen what they say. The guys told me that once the municipal came here and they saw stuff lying like this, and there was no one around. They just came, they took everything, anything which was left, they just banned it. And when they came back from work, it was like that, there was nothing. And it's a loss for them, you understand, and it's painful for them. We don't have alternative, as we've been here for quite some time. We are used to this place. This place it's our livelihood source of survival. So uh, I think, yeah, it's up to the engagement with the city, but we are hoping for, for better solutions. ROC, African um, Reclaimers Organization, wat in uh, Johannesburg gestig is, en, en hulle, hulle is, uh, soos, soos die Kams groep hier so in Centurion, is een groepering van Bagheresi, maar hulle word beter herken as Kams hier so, want die stad hier so is nog nie so bezig met die Bagheresi om met hulle te onderhandel en dit nie. In, in Johannesburg is dit beter, want die Bagheresi daar het gesê, byvoorbeeld, luister, hierdie ouwens van Piki Tap is bezig om al ons bezigheid te vat, wat sy werk moet ons nou doen. En um, de, hulle, hulle het actually met dit het hulle uh, voor en toe gegaan en die staat gekry om te herken wat sy waarde hulle tot die staatse economie bring en dit. En nou, dit gaan baie goed met RO as een organisatie en het is vir hulle makkeliker die stad om met die bagerezie te communikeer dier een organisatie soos RO en dan vir die bagerezie om ook as hulle een probleem het weer terug te communikeer met die stad. Want die bagerezie het nie die geriewe wat die average ouwe nie sabop sê nie. Die stad is vir my een bykie kortzichtig in hoe hulle die bagerezie approach en hulle is nie raar geopvaardig om grond available to make. I think a proper place for us to keep our stuff. Because uh, where we're staying right now, you know, it's, a, it's, a, it's a municipality park. And uh, when they like, they come here and tell us that, yeah, we need to go, it's illegal for us to stay here, you understand? And that interrupts our work, you understand? The reality is that it's, that it's not a legal occupation of the land. And we can't condone anything that's illegal. If you do it for one, you have to do it for everyone. In this case, it is also the nuisance that happens. And it becomes a nuisance for a resident to have to deal with the smell of burning plastic. Eventually, we want uh, uh, reclaimers to also have processing plants. You know, we want them to be able to, to do semi-processing so that they can sell uh, good quality raw materials to Coca-Cola, to Unilever and other companies. Local government officials, national government officials, people from industry who actually know very, very little about what it takes to get a recyclable out of the trash and into the value chain, were sitting on their own and developing their own ideas and programs. And, uh, you know, sometimes they really had the the, they wanted to be assisting reclaimers, but because they didn't bother to speak to them, 
they would come up with programs that, were, that would be absolute failures. We are actually the ones that are subsidizing not only the city of Johannesburg, we are also subsidizing the residents, subsidizing the industries that are producing the material and don't put enough effort to go and collect it back. So this 80 to 90 percent collection rate is for free. There's no country that actually does that. It's only in South Africa. And that's because a group of people who did not have jobs and had no interest in doing crime or sitting down woke up and did something. I mean, there's people that are feeding their families. I'm, I'm taking my daughter to school. I'm, I'm trying my best, you know. It's one of the things we want to highlight when we are sitting with the city to say, here we want future things. You can provide in this uh, program of them for integrated development programs. This way at least two, three, four of us can be taken to classes and receive that certificate to come back, you educate your colleagues, and it will become a bigger thing. These guys are small businesses. What about helping them develop and upgrade? Because they could be taking waste from every single investment these property owners have and incorporate them within this big business system. And really in South Africa, if we look at what happens, and it's widely reported how business in South Africa is concentrated in few big businesses, 80%. In more developed economies, you've got 60 to 80% of the creation or the development or the production of GDP coming from small businesses. I mean, what a beautiful place to start at the macro level, informal, there is a market. You wouldn't have all these guys if there wasn't a market and there wasn't money. Now engage them. It would only take a mad person not to understand that South Africa has no jobs and people are making alternative options and we're trying to make a living.